At what point did a teaching opportunity open up for you? When I studied my master's in screenwriting in the UK, um, I had to decide whether I'm going to stay in the UK or come back to South Africa. And I decided to come back to South Africa because there were, there were more opportunities. The UK film industry is very regulated in a way. You have to almost do apprentice positions to work your way up the ladder. And I came back to South Africa, and as soon as I came back to South Africa, my sort of mentor at the university there, a woman called Leslie Marks, she said, don't you want to come talk to our students about screenwriting? Almost immediately. So I'd just come back, and my, I'll never forget my first sort of teaching opportunity around screenwriting was to a class of um, yes, second or third year English students who are also interested in writing and screenwriting, and then I gave a talk on what I knew about screenwriting at that time, which was hardly anything. I was so nervous, I had to write on the whiteboard, and I, I kind of had this thing about there's no step ladder to success in screenwriting. There's, you know, you have to kind of make it up as you go along in terms of you have to hustle, do a lot of hustling. And that was the first time, and then from then on, um, I just guess the lecture went down really well, and so they started employing me part-time to um, teach. And then eventually it turned into full-time, and I've been teaching, I've basically been teaching for the last 20 years very soon. That was 2000, so it's like 19 years I've been teaching, and that's been on and off at various institutions, and sometimes full-time, and it's been a long career. So it's interesting, my mom is a teacher, and my dad was a, he worked in a photography store and was very interested in filmmaking and used to bring film cameras home in the early days, and he bought video cameras home. And, and so I think I'm the combination of the two, the filmmaker and the teacher. So I don't know, it's just, I love teaching. I love inspiring people to tell the stories that they really want to tell. That's my, my true passion. So yeah, that's when I first started teaching. And I've, ever since, I've, I've always been doing it, yeah. So when you first were asked to teach this class, it didn't feel like deer in the headlights? Oh, no, it felt terrifying. Felt, oh, it did? Oh, okay. Oh, I was so scared. Um, and interestingly enough, I was speaking to um, one of my fellow authors recently who, who said when they teach, they still feel nervous. And I think it's quite a good thing. I still feel a little nervous. I mean, I gave a talk recently, and it was it uh, turned out being much bigger than I thought it would. It was like a studio space, and I had a little microphone thing, and there were like loads of people. Oh, and no. I was like, okay. And I was a little bit nervous. But I know when I talk about what I'm really passionate about, it just flows, which is great. So um, the nerves subside, but I think being slightly nervous, because um, nervousness, sort of fear and excitement are very similar. And um, there's a saying about um, fear is just excitement without the breath. If you breathe through it, then you can access your excitement and then you can get excited about things. But there's definitely a fear about, um, I think it's good for a teacher to be a little bit nervous before they go on stage or before they go on, you know, in front of the class. Because I think if you're bored about what you're doing and you're like, oh, well, I'll just go exactly. and do, I'll do the same thing again. I know it works. It just doesn't have an edge to it. I think there needs to be a little bit of uh, deer in the headlights slightly. When you start losing that, I think maybe your passion has gone. I don't know. You know, that is a great point because I've had different people come at me before an interview because I let them know that I am nervous. Yeah. And one of whom was an A-list actor who asked me, why are you nervous? Oh. And I said, because this matters to me. Yeah. And he was like, oh, wow. And another person who mm. was a journalist and said, you shouldn't be nervous. You should do this all the time. Uh, and I said, I am. And she well, said, Well, you told why? me you were nervous before this interview. And I was <laughs> right? like, fantastic. Because I we like care. Yeah. yeah, because you care. It's, you know, it's important to you. So yeah, I think it's, it's good to be a, bit, a little bit of nervous before you go in any public forum. It's good. I think that's part of the Western culture, though, is to kind of be like, oh, I got this. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, and I, I think totally. that's false. Yeah. I and think I think so. that's something that... There's a lot of falsity in... in in our lives, you know, often we, we have to pretend to be people we're not. And, you know, there's that imposter syndrome that pops up and then you're like, am I really this person? Am I really good enough? Am I really a writer? Am I, you know, am I a creative person? And these questions are not really supposed to be spoken about, but people are speaking about them more and more, which I think is really healing for society. I hope so. So, yeah.